That's why by establishing shared values, creating a cohesive family financial plan, and ensuring ongoing open communication, you're not just creating a plan for your money, you're laying a foundation for your legacy. Making a generational impact starts with one, one person, one family, one community. And so the Gen 1 Legacy is my attempt to help first-gen tech professionals like you get your financial house in order so you can live your legacy. You know, some say that the family that plays together stays together. And you know, the simple reason that the saying holds true is because unstructured time well spent together creates stronger social and emotional ties within a family unit. You're literally bonding together. Now, when it comes to talking about money, some families find the opposite to be true. That's because discussions around money often repel members of the family. And so the more you try to talk about money, especially how it's supposed to be used, the greater the tensions that are likely to rise. But here's the rub. Most individuals know that achieving life and financial goals often requires planning for the future. Now, this work involves starting with the end in mind, identifying the resources that you have today, and then creating a strategy for bridging the gap between where you are today and where you want to be in the future. It's that simple, right? Well, sure, this approach to planning is simple, but it's not easy. This is especially true when you're trying to get your family spending and savings habits all on the same page. That's because it's one thing to plan for a singular vision for your life or for your life with your partner, and it's another degree on a plan that your kids or other family members can buy into. So then what can you do to create a financial framework for your wealth that involves your family and helps you achieve your broader legacy goals while improving your family's togetherness? Well, you can start by creating a unified family wealth strategy. Now, this approach involves creating a shared family vision for your wealth, identifying easy to achieve goals that your family can rally around, and developing principles to foster effective communication to ensure everyone's voice is heard. All right, now when it comes to creating a unified family wealth strategy, especially if you're a first-gen wealth builder, you need more than just sharing what you know when it comes to talking to your family about money. Indeed, you need a common money language. In other words, for your family to get on the same page when it comes to money, you need a singular reference point to ensure that you're all singing from the same hymnal. And so that's where establishing a shared value system comes into play. Indeed, this approach allows your family's money decision to be filtered through the same lens and ensure that every financial decision reflects your family's core principles. So then where do you start with this process? Well, the process begins by first defining your family's values. Now, this is a topic that we've covered in depth in the past so be sure to check out our recent resources. Either way, to facilitate this first step and actually identify your family values, you can utilize exercises or workshops designed to help your family articulate and align its values. Now, these approaches can be as simple as discussing what values each family member believes are critically important to your family, to something more structured like attending a workshop with a professional facilitator to help you nail down what's really important to your collective as a whole. Either way, the key here is to ensure that every family member's voice is heard and that the values chosen truly reflect the collective goals of the family. And if you're still not sure where to start, then James Clear's book, Atomic Habits, has some great exercises to choose from and help you get started. And you can also visit one of my favorite tools, and that's the Life Values Inventory Online, available at lifevaluesinventory.org to help you get started. Either way, by clearly defining and integrating your values into your family's financial planning process, what you're doing is ensuring that the way that you and your family talk about money isn't just about growing your assets, but about building a legacy that reflects what's truly important to you as a collective. Doing so not only aligns your financial decisions with your ethical and moral beliefs, it also strengthens your family's bonds by uniting everyone behind a common purpose. All right, now after establishing a shared value system with your family, the next crucial step in creating a unified family wealth strategy and finding harmony when it comes to talking to your family about money is creating a family financial plan that aligns with your family's values. Now, earlier we talked about how the family that plays together stays together. Now, when it comes to money, the truth is that the family that plans together stays together. You see, it's one thing to create a vision for where you should go. It's another to execute on that vision and move your family collectively towards that purpose. And that's where a family financial plan comes into play. And why is that? Well, that's because a family financial plan serves as a roadmap to guide your family towards achieving its financial goals, all while staying true to your core values and your principles. So then where do you begin? Well, you can start by setting clear collective financial goals for the next 5, 10, 20, and 100 years. It seems like a long time, right? Well, the point here is to get your family to think big. Indeed, this process involves a collaborative discussion where each family member shares their personal goals. And together, Together, you identify common objectives that align with your collective values and where your family's headed. This could include saving for kids' education expenses, planning for family vacations, imagining what retirement might look like for your family, or setting aside funds to support the learning goals of generations down the road. However you put these goals together, they should ultimately reflect your family's shared values. Now, once you've shared your values and your goals, it's time to bring them to life with some real hard timelines that you could all get behind. Now, you could think of these as your family's financial milestones. Now, the beauty in setting these firm, hard date 
guidelines is that they give you something tangible to work towards and it motivates everyone in the family to stay on track. So how do we get here? Well, imagine that you decided to fully fund your great grandchildren's education so they don't have to lean on student loans. It's a big goal, right? Well, sure, it might be, but we can simplify it by breaking down the goal starting with a date. For example, let's say that you want to have a million dollars saved in an educational trust by 2070. This means that your family will need to figure out how much to set aside each month starting today and stay committed to that savings goal as a family until your milestone is reached. Indeed, having a big, tangible savings goal, like money set aside for future generations that benefits the entire family, can get everyone energized and on the same page. You know, in some ways, it forces each family member to consider their own money habits and how they're either helping or hindering the family's broader collective goal. All right, so once you've identified your family's values and set the stage for a broader financial plan, the next step in creating a cohesive family wealth system is to foster healthier communication between each member in your family. All right, but what does communication have to do with money? Well, we touched on this earlier, and this step is crucial because without effective communication, you can't achieve your collective goals. Indeed, if you don't know where you're going, any road will get you there. It's that essential. That's why with open and regular communication, what you're doing is ensuring that everyone in your family is on the same page, understands the financial approaches being utilized, and enables everyone to feel engaged in the decision-making process. And so where do you start? Well, you can start by establishing a regular schedule for family meetings that are dedicated to talking about money. Now, these meetings should be structured in a way to allow each family member, regardless of age, their own opportunity to voice their opinions, ask questions, and contribute ideas to the shared family vision. Now, this could start as quarterly meetings where you review your financial goals, discuss any changes in your family circumstances, track spending, and evaluate your progress towards achieving your family financial goals. For example, your family could use these meetings to discuss the performance of your investment portfolio. You could talk about your philanthropic giving or consider spending or savings adjustments to meet your educational funding goals. Either way, it's one thing to get together to talk about money. It's another to hold a meeting where everyone feels like they took something away from it. That's why it's essential that your money-related manners be presented in a way that's understandable to all members of your family especially the younger ones. Indeed, these meetings should be used as opportunities to indirectly educate your family about financial principles, investment strategies, and the importance of budgeting and savings. This approach not only helps in building financial literacy across your family, but also ensures that everyone understands the family's approach when it comes to money and their individual roles in achieving the family's collective goals. And finally, when it comes to fostering healthy communication about money, you'll want to take some time to discuss succession planning. Now, when it comes down to it, few people enjoy talking about their potential untimely demise, right? Even so, incorporating discussions of succession planning and wealth transfer into your family meetings, what you're doing is you're normalizing an otherwise uncomfortable topic and showing your family that you care enough to not burden them with the indecisions that typically come at a vulnerable time in their lives. And so, what does this approach look like? Well, these sort of discussions involve explaining the structures put into place to address the family's financial needs after you're gone, like a trust or a will, and how they reflect the values and the goals of the family with some form of continuity. Now, here again, these sorts of discussions are crucial for preparing the next generation for their future roles and responsibilities and managing your family's wealth. That's because during these conversations, you could explain the purpose of your family's trust to your children, outlining how it operates, the benefits for even having this trust in the first place, including how it supports your family's values and the goals for your family over the long term. Either way, effective family communication is about fostering a culture of openness and trust and collective responsibility, especially when it comes to money. And so by organizing regular family meetings, fostering transparency, and focusing on education and succession planning, you're creating a strong foundation for your family's financial future. Indeed, when it comes down to it, bringing your family together around money can seem daunting at first, but it's undoubtedly achievable with the right approach. That's why by establishing shared values, creating a cohesive family financial plan, and ensuring ongoing open communication, you're not just creating a plan for your money, you're laying a foundation for your legacy. And this legacy is underpinned by shared goals and values and a collective vision that transcends mere numbers on a balance sheet because it's about creating a bond that fortifies your family against strains and uncertainties that money-related matters can sometimes bring. Remember, the simple act of coming together, setting shared goals, and openly discussing money can transform the way that your family views its wealth. Indeed, it's not just about ensuring financial stability for future generations. It's about using wealth as a tool to reinforce your family's values, support each other's goals, and make a meaningful impact in your community. And you know, the beauty of this process is that it not only brings your family closer together, it also empowers each member to take one step closer to becoming the masters of their own financial independence journey. To learn more about today's topic, you can visit the episodes page at LegacyGen1.com. And if you can find one person in your life who would benefit from today's message, please share this episode with them. But until next time, I'm Peter Donisanu wishing you and yours abundant health and prosperity.
The Gen 1 Legacy Podcast is brought to you by Franklin Madison Private Wealth. Franklin Madison Private Wealth is a registered investment advisor firm with its registration and principal place of business in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Registration of an investment advisor does not imply a certain level of skill or training. The information shared today is not intended to be personal, legal, investment, or tax advice, or solicitation to buy or sell any security, or engage in a particular investment strategy. The commentary and forecasts are limited to the dissemination of and general information pertaining to Franklin Madison Private Wealth's investment advisory services and are based on economic and market conditions that are subject to change without notice. For additional information about Franklin Madison Private Wealth, including fees and services, please contact Franklin Madison Private Wealth. Or refer to the investment advisor public disclosures.